Okay, this problem I'm going to attempt, I'm going to go through two different ways. There's sort of a two-step version that might be a bit easier, and then a one-step version if you can make the connections okay. They're essentially the same, and it's just the, the one step is just merging the two steps from the previous uh, attempt. But I think it's, it's worthwhile looking at it both ways because some of the more complex questions that you'll see in the homework and quiz are also that way. So we've got a 1,000 Newton weight hung from the inner wheel here. Picture that. Um, how much force would you need to apply the outer wheel to lift it? Well, we've got a two diameters here. So the first way I'm going to do this is to do kind of an intermediate step and find the mechanical advantage involved in this machine. Because once we do that, the second part is pretty easy. So in part A, let's find the mechanical advantage. I know that for a wheel and axle, the mechanical advantage is the input diameter divided by the load diameter. So I'm going to put out, define both of those. Which one's input, which one's load? Yes, sir. Input is the axle. How do you know? Because of the previous example. Oh, is this the same as the previous example? No. Why not? Because the previous example was the other around. Okay, how do you know that? The numbers and the units. Okay, but how do I know which one is my load here? Oh, I, because, <laughs> so like, the axle can be considered like the motor, like the drivetrain, so it has to spin the wheel. But could I also spin the wheel and get the axle to move? Oh, sure. So I could turn either one. We have to look carefully at the problem to figure out which Your one's which. load is the inner wheel because that's where you're putting the 1,000 newtons. Right. We hung a 1,000 newton weight from the inner wheel. That makes that the load. And it says, how much force would you, that means input, have to apply to the outer wheel? So this outer wheel is the input wheel. Inner wheel is the load. You've got to read each of these carefully because they actually could be used either way. Our previous example, as George pointed out, was flipped. So the diameter of our input then is a bigger wheel, 2.5 centimeters. Diameter of our load is a smaller 0 0.75. Now if I put that into my mechanical advantage, I have 2.5 here for my input 0 0.75 for my load three point three I think. We don't really have repeating numbers. Remember because these are can't we can't assume those are exact. It'll be it'll be very close to two point five, but it could be two point five three and that limits what we should write down here. So it's just 3.3, well that's a mechanical advantage. Now, looking back up here, it says how much force would I need to apply? I need to find F input, right? That means, yeah. and that's what led me down here. I've got an F load as, that's our load that we're lifting. That's what the machine is lifting up, so that's the load. We are asked to find how much force would you have to apply. So that tells us it's an F input. And so when I was looking at this, I said, well, I've got a load force here. I want to find an input force here. I need to find the mechanical advantage in order to do that. And that's what, so that's why I took this step. Now, going back here, we just said our mechanical advantage is 3.33. Our load force was at 1,000 newtons, and we want to find the input force. So now we're going to go back to our formula that goes for this machine and any others. Mechanical advantage is F load over F input. I want to solve for F input. That's what it's asking me to find. Yes, Doc? And don't you have to like, time? Multiply by what? Well, you're going to multiply the 
If I multiply by F input on both sides, we have one on top, one on the bottom that will cancel, leaving the F input times MA is equal to F load. To get it off of this side. And that leaves me F input on the left is equal to F load and mechanical advantage on the bottom. Now I've got numbers to put in there. Dividing those out, we should get 300. Any units? Newton. Newton's school. Newton's. Yes, Newton. Because there's only one. Right. It's like a negative and a positive. What? Yeah, because negative, negative and negative would cancel. It's what you say. Oh. Now, there is another way to do this. Very, very similar. But <clears throat> you kind of have to make sense of this. Um, in the top, we said, well, I want to do an F input, but I don't know an F input. So I was saying that I have to use in my second part here, the fact that F load over F input equals mechanical advantage. But mechanical advantage is also, as we said up here, it's also D input over D load for this machine. So if both of those find mechanical advantage, they must be equal to each other. They both come up with the same number if you divide them, right? So we said that D, D input over D load is mechanical advantage. Yeah. And we said F load over F input is equal to mechanical advantage. Yeah, but one's 3.3 and one's 300. No. Divide 1,000 by 300, you get 3.33. Oh, this is saying if A equals to B equals B and B equals C, then A must also equal C. I got it. <laughs> so the, the shorter way to do this is just to cut out this calculation of mechanical advantage and just start there. F load over F input must be equal to D input over D load. Let's put in val the values here, so I usually wouldn't, but it's a lot of writing in this case. And I'm going to shorten that to F in and be equal to, we had 2.5 centimeters over 0.75. How do I solve this? Divide. Mm, probably not. Cross multiply. So we, we multiply these two, set them equal to those two. So a thousand newtons times 0 0.75 centimeters must be equal to F input times 2.5 centimeters. Okay. Now what would I do to get F input alone? Divide, or times. One of the two. Ooh, one of the two, what do you think? Got to, get, got to get rid of the 2.5 centimeters. Oh, you're going to divide it. You're going to divide. <clears throat> and dividing that out, we're going to get the same answer, 300 newtons. We do it a little more quickly, but it's a little... You've got to understand it a little better to set up. So either way is perfectly all right. It is. That's why I need you to practice. Okay. Ramp is built. We know mechanical advantage of a ramp. How do we find mechanical advantage of a ramp? Also called an inclined plane. Yes, George. Right. 
So this is the length of the ramp itself divided by the, its height, how high it's going. What are we trying to find here? Mechanical advantage, so length over height, and then that'll give you your answer. Length, it's 16 feet long. It's eight feet high. So yeah, all we gotta do, divide them. What does it mean when mechanical advantage is above one? It's gonna be an A, no, it's gonna be that is right? Oh, oh it's free, free fall. Yes, sir. Um, it's more force. What's that? More force. More force. What do you mean, more force? Like it's going to require more force. All the way around. The machine applies more force. It's easier for you if it's a mechanical advantage of greater than one. So the machine applies more force than you have to, to do it. So like the okay, same setup as the last time. It asks now, though, how much force would you need to apply? When you see something like that, what are we looking for? We're looking for a mechanical advantage. No. When we're looking for how much force yep. you need to apply, it will be F input. Yes, thank you. Yep, that's what it is. <laughs> the load is always the, the weight of the thing that you're trying to move, so that's up here. We actually just did this. We found the mechanical advantage last time in the last problem. That's two. We took 16 feet length divided by 8 foot height. We found two. So for this one, the load force is 500 newtons. You know, mechanical advantage. F load plus over F input. And we rearranged that in the last or two examples ago. Multiply both sides by F input to get it up on top and divide by mechanical advantage. You get F input is equal to F load over mechanical advantage, and you've got those numbers. Five hundred by two is two fifty. Any units? Newtons. They don't count. We could also, if we hadn't done the previous problem, <coughs> we could have done them in one step. So this is very much like the one we started the hour on. Um, we could, we can find the mechanical advantage first, like we did in the previous step, and then put it in here. But we could also say that well. One way to find mechanical advantage is F load over F input, but this is a, an inclined plane. So we can also say that it's equal to the length over the height. Use this part, cross multiply and solve it that way, whichever way is your preference is fun. Now we've got the homework. Through